So here's what we're going to be covering in today's video. On the left you will find the segment and on the right you will find the timestamp associated with that time with that uh, segment. So first off, shout out to Border Destroyer who is kind of letting me send him one of these files. Great guy, you should really check out his content. I'm going to be sending him the installer file which we're going to be covering first and seeing how Malware Bytes reacts to it and if it gets detected on any other platforms. Next, we're going to be covering a piece of remote access software I've made in Python, and we're going to be seeing if Malwarebytes will detect that, or if any other antivirus solutions will detect that as well. Then third, we're going to be covering some known malware samples, uh, specifically something covering the Mirai botnet, and we're going to see if Malwarebytes or any other anti-malware solutions can uh, detect it. So, uh, kind of a little, like, editor's note. None of these files were made on this VM. They, uh, were instead thrown onto this VM after being compiled and made. So, it's not like the VM can be like, oh, yeah, you know, this, this was made on here, it should be fine. No, that doesn't apply here. So, I'm gonna go ahead and scan the file with malware bytes. And while that's all happening, I'm going to pop open... Uh, virus total and we are now going to see if exactly this gets detected on any other major platforms now the reason why I'm doing this specifically is because if we use virus total we can get a decent understanding of who exactly is detecting it and who isn't and ooh it's starting to pop a couple of them off look at this so we're getting a 15 out of 71 detection rating which a lot of the files inside of this one actually get like close to three and that's because this file specifically downloads stuff so you can see CrowdStrike falcon google which almost always detects everything even casper keys getting in on this one and yet if we scroll down far enough you can see our beloved malware bytes. And you see how it's not being detected here or in the actual program itself. So unless they have it completely different on the uh, full version outside of a trial, which I doubt they do, they are not detecting this at all. So I'm actually gonna go into real-time protection and I'm gonna enable like everything. And then and then you have this allow insecure Java operations and internal IP ranges. I bet you some dumbass is gonna click that and be like, "Why did I get hacked?" Uh, because you have insecure Java operations selected. Odd how they have specifically Java right there. I find that very odd. I think all of this actually looks good. And to make sure I don't have like it set in the allow list, it's not here. Okay, I I don't have that in there. So let's let's go ahead and scan that again just to make sure that by editing those settings it doesn't change anything fundamentally with its detections. Wow. Didn't detect it then, so let's go ahead and do a simple scan and see if it'll detect it then. Now while this is all scanning, I want to make this very, very clear. This is all done within a legal setting. It is done within a VM. No one's computer is being affected by this. So please do not go out and try to recreate this. Do not load malware on your own computer. Do not load malware on somebody else's computer or even on a company's. Do not go out, spread malware, or use malware in an insecure and unsafe way because trust me, it will come back to bite you in the ass. So going here on the... Uh, behavior analysis for the uh, installer file we can actually see it got tipped off on some dropped files some uh, tactics and some uh, network communications which this doesn't have any built-in network communication outside of uh, github so let's check the uh, file system it can read write and delete files seems pretty normal uh, enumerates portable execution 
uh, headers. It allocates memory, creates processes, creates threads, terminate processes. Pretty simple stuff, pretty simple. Can impact stuff, you know, delete shadow copies. So it's actually trying to prevent any backups. Pretty normal stuff. It's editing registry keys. Pretty unnormal. Well, whenever I say normal, I mean like normal in the sense of malware, not uh, normal in the sense of a normal file doing this. Yeah, this all looks about right. And this is just going to scan legitimately everything on the file system. Every temporary file, everything. Alright, so the scan is done, and we can see zero stuff detected. Although we have this file right here, which should be malicious. So just to make sure it is malicious, let's go ahead and run it. Random CMD popping up. And we get a UAC, yeah, UAC, uh window here let's go ahead and approve that sure let's run this malware it's installing stuff using powershell sure yeah let's run it in a dangerous way oh Oh shit, did I unmount that volume? Oh, and looks like it froze. There's no need for the static see. These auto leads can be you automatically good. Alright, and we're inside. Everything looks all good. Let's go ahead and open up task manager. And we're restarting. Oh, okay. That's really not spooky. Now a casualty of transforming situations. Forget complacence because Rom is what you're facing. And here we are presented with no bootable image. So let's go ahead and try and boot from an Ubuntu Live USB and see if we can access the file system. Okay, so now we are booting into a a, a, snap, a snapshot right before I installed Malwarebytes. So I'm going to go through the process of installing Malwarebytes and installing good old-fashioned uh, Python. Because this actually requires a Python uh, interpreter. So let's go ahead and do that. So now with Python installed, we should be able to run it through CMD. Let's go ahead and check. Which we can. Good. Which means I need to get the file on here. Okay, so now Malwarebytes is installed. Let's go ahead, open it up. And now we can go ahead and get all of the uh, fun stuff enabled again. And now we have everything enabled as we did last time. Let's go ahead and get that file on here. Now let's scan it with malware bytes and see the outcome. With zero detections. So let's spin up a attacker VM and see what happens. There we go. Now we are 
pimping out here with our Cali VM. Let's go ahead and get the file on here. So now that we have the server up and running, I'm going to throw it over here to my side window and I'm going to run the client. Ah, my bad. There is one thing I need to change on the client, which is the actual address to be listening on. And now that we have the server running again, we can save the client's file and run it. And now we have a connection established with the server. How dandy, how dandy is that? So, we have a connection established and we can see its IP address. Hmm, that is odd. Ah, I know the issue. Regardless, we can still get the output of commands. So we can interact with the system remotely. And let's see if Malwarebytes has anything to say about this. If there is any kind of scan we can have to see what exactly is happening. Still, nothing. Nothing on Malwarebytes end. Let's see if we can just do a full scan, because that also checks memory. So let's see if we can get an output from memory, shall we? And it seems like I need to fix some parsing on that end, but it is what it is. Regardless, we can still interact with the computer through a remote shell, and Malwarebytes so far is doing absolutely jack shit about this. It simply does not care and does not notice that we have a remote shell to this system. Now isn't that just a little odd, is it not? Let's see what else we can do. Let's try and open up a CMD. So we're now inside of a shell inside of a shell, which we can exit. And it detected nothing. Malwarebytes does not care that we are remotely accessing it. To answer that one viewer's question, here's your answer. It simply does not care that we can remotely access it through a shell. And keep in mind, this is no Metasploit or MSF Venom designed payload. No, no, no. I actually made this. Because anybody using decent malware isn't going to use a pre-made shell in a, in a pre-done remote TCP socket connection. They're instead going to program something. Now, could I have gone out and done this in something like C? Yes, will I know? Reason being, I don't want to. But we can remotely interact with this, which is insane in my opinion, that an antivirus software that claims to be one of the best for users and the best for basic, generic Joe Schmoes out there. Now, I want to do one last test against Malwarebytes just to see if it truly is that stupid. Or if I've just been getting lucky. So, I'm gonna go onto Malware Bazaar and I'm just gonna download something. So, Malware Bytes detected nothing again from that, from that sample, right? So now that we have a legitimate piece of malware from the Mirai botnet, 
which is one of the largest botnets out there. Let's see if Malwarebytes is going to detect this. It should detect it. But it doesn't. It doesn't detect malware specifically designed for a botnet. It doesn't. It just doesn't. How crazy is that? So let's go on virus total. See what happens there. I mean, you already saw that sample we gave tipped off several different, uh, 17 or so different vendors. So let's see if the client software will tip off any as well. If the remote access software will be tripping any uh, antivirus software. And let's see if the Mirai botnet file Ooh, Mirai already got 36 hits. Right off the bat, didn't even need to scan it. It was a known sample. Looking through here. Wow, I don't see malware bytes anywhere. It's almost like they can't detect it. Bitdefender, Microsoft, Casperkey, Google. Where, where, where's Google? I saw Google in here, I'm pretty sure. Where, where is Google? Google. They're all detecting it. Yet Malwarebytes isn't. And looky here. The client software has absolutely zero detections on it. Now isn't that just crazy? So basically, to sum up this video, Malwarebytes is a piece of shit software that should never be on your system. This is arguably the worst antivirus I have ever seen and ever ex had an experience with. Malwarebytes, if you are somehow watching this video, I am more than welcome to help you. I will figure out how to write an antivirus well, and I will help you fight threats like this. Because clearly, you are insufficient at doing that job. Anyways... Stay safe online, have a good day, and stay out of jail.